tile data source, which basically every time the map control wants a new tile, it asks so you for it. It asks you for it, and you just generate it on the fly and you give it to them. And oh, the fun you could have with that! It, it is. It's tremendous fun. And yeah. okay, all right. So we've got tiles, we've got children, all of these things. I, where does it all lay out? Like, how does it how does it build a map? There's right. a lot of pieces here. It's a fascinating control. So, this is how the map control builds up what it is the user ends up seeing. Okay. So first of all, and the stuff on the left is programmable stuff, and in a minute you're going to see stuff appearing on the right, which is the bits that the map control. All right. So the first thing you can do as a programmer, you can actually replace, you can actually give a whole new background to it. So if you want to create a kind of real custom scene where you are generating this virtual landscape or something, and you want to generate the background, mm -hmm. You can supply this in, and then you can draw on it using latitude and longitude, so, so using uh, uh, topographical kind of... So this is to create a whole custom, complete custom view. Makes Most sense. of the time, you're not going to want to do that. You just let the map control draw the background in. All right. Yep. So then the next one, this is the, tip, this is the, the default background. So, yeah, if you want to have your own custom background, you set the map control to uh, a, a sort a mode of none, so it, it wouldn't draw all this stuff. But by default, you get the, the normal land and water backdrop. Uh, you can then put your background overlay, so you can actually supply an image that gets gets uh, gets rendered on top of this. So obviously, what you want is you have content on there, and then the rest of it is, is maybe a watermark or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you could do that. Exactly right. Yeah, that's right. And then the map control injects onto, does a layer of um, parks and industrial stuff, so kind of buildings and, and basic roads and all that sure. sort of thing goes on top of that. Um, then you can put in, again, there's an opportunity for you to inject an area overlay, so you can put that in. Like the outline of a property or something like that, maybe? Yeah. And then the map control draws your roads on. Oh, nice. Yeah. You can put your own roads on top of that. Sure. Trails <laughs> in, your, uh, yeah. in your park or whatever. Yeah, you could, you could inject a, a layer of that. Then you get the labels, so uh, sort of objects that are, uh, are on the, you know, the, the kind of town names and the, the normal labels that appear on a map would go, that's the map control adding that. Uh, not surprisingly, there's another, yeah, another overlay. You can supply a foreground overlay. You, that would, is that where you would put the labels on your own things that you have? Yes. I see. Yes. And then, finally, you get to the sort of programmable objects, these ones we were just talking about. These are your map icon elements with your icons, polylines, and polygons. They get drawn on top of all of that. So you've got this huge layer cake. These are part of the map. These aren't your XAML parts yet. No, so this is all. And, and then, um, so before that, un underneath the XAML children, then the map control renders all of that together and, and spits out the graphic that the user is looking at. And then you draw on top of it anything XAML that you data bound, any additional objects. Wow, so I can say I can see that if I did draw a XAML object, the, the, the Z index would always be in favor of my XAML control. That's good. Yes, yeah, that's right. You're on the top of the stack. All right. Um, maybe we should take a look. I, I, I can see it in a slide, but maybe it would make more sense if we uh, did sure. it in Visual Studio. All right. Let's let's go and uh, let's go and do a demo on this. All right. Let's create ourselves a new project. Windows 10. Call it Drawing Shapes. And uh, we're going to draw some shapes on a map as the name suggests. There we go. We've got our new project up. Uh, I'm going to go straight over to main page and let's go on the toolbox, go and find ourselves a map control. There we go. Drag that onto the surface. I'm going to get rid of all those margins, reset all of those. So it now fills the entire page. Give it a name because we're going to need that later on. It's called my map. Let's go and write some code and we're just going to override the on navigated to, so we can put a bit of code just to say, you know, where to, where the map should show. And so we got my map. I'm going to set the center to be a new uh, geo point. Uh, let's put that in. Let's just resolve that so we don't have to type that out every time. Yeah, geo point. And a geo point takes a basic geo position. So we have to new up a basic geo position. Uh, that needs to be, uh, we can give it a latitude, and I've got some magic numbers here, 52, get this right, 1, 1, 4, 2, 7, and a longitude, and this is this mysterious location will reveal itself shortly, 399780, and uh, well, let's set a, a zoom level on it as well, because um, we don't want it, if you set a zoom level of one, that means whole world, you'll see the whole world, so the center then becomes irrelevant. But I'm going to set a zoom level of 16, which should see a lot of street level detail. 
because 20 is kind of right down at looking really closely uh, and one is the whole world so here's our app coming up and we've got a map uh, looks like Netherlands to me going to be in the Netherlands yeah all right so that's a basic map straight away now let's do something a bit more interesting let's draw some shapes on top of that map I'll ignore the designer though there's a few few quirks uh, insert snippets um, I've got loads of app bar buttons here which I'm going to hook up some event handlers first one and the next one and we're going to fill these in uh, draw points uh, delete all uh, zoom out and finally zoom in and let's start filling these in now with all these empty event handlers first of all let's draw some lines uh, but I need some help first so I'm going to drag in um, a couple of a couple of things first of all a little logo we're going to need in a little while and also a couple of files and I'll show you what's in them in just a second uh, so there's these files. First of all, there's this useful uh, a map, an extensions class where you can get the view area of a map and you can set the view area of a map, so that's pretty useful. And this point list is just some, some test data, it's just for this particular demo. So we've got a li line one, which is four geo points, line two is two geo points, uh, area one, uh, of course, is as four geo points, uh, area two has loads, and you can see there's some random. So loads of test data, that's all it is. All right, let's make use of this stuff. So, first of all, we're going to say uh, just well let's just set up a um, a color we can use which is colors dot resolve that colors dot uh, let's say green and now I'm going to draw some green lines so for each var item data object we'll call that in our collection the collection comes from that um, you point list class that I just dragged in and we can do point list get lines so we're going to get for each line on that test data we're going to create ourselves a shape and that is going to be a map polygon so a polyline sorry so it's a polyline so a line we can have multiple kind of legs on it if you like uh, each polyline I'm going to set you've got uh, stroke thickness and say how thick it's going to be nine will do that it's going to be quite a thick one the color is that color I just defined up the top there stroke color and we can also set whether it's dashed, which it isn't. And where do we want to put it? Oh, Z index first. So you can draw things at different uh, Z index, as Jerry would say. And set the path is equal to a new geopath. And this is where we give the uh, list of points. And so actually what we're going to do is select from our data set uh, any point that has got a position in it. So we're just a bit of, bit of, sort of data validation there. That's how I created our map polyline object, and then all that remains is simply to add that to uh, the map elements collection of our map. Uh, and I'll add that on. So that path, of course, is a collection of lat longs. Um, so that will just draw in the right place on the map. Let's give that a go. So here's our, we have to just yeah, resize it. And here's a go. There's our lines. There you can see we've got three legs there. Notice the map service token not specified on the bottom there. That's, you'll need a map service token later on. Currently, you can't get them. Uh, the the, uh, the form, the, the, you can't get them. The website's not open yet. Uh, let's copy that and do something similar, but this is the get areas. And instead of map polylines, we're going to create map polygons. Uh, let's change the color. Colors dot dark blue. Uh, we also have a fill for an area has a fill color, so we can set a color on that. That's colors dot just blue. Uh, other than that, it's just the same as the previous one. We just add that to our map elements, so now we can be able to draw two kinds of shapes on our map. There's our lines, and here's our areas. All very good, all very nice. Right, the next one. Um, now we're going to use, this is slightly different, draw some points, some uh, other ones on it. So first of all, I need to get my image in, because we're going to use that. So uh, this, we're going to use this snappily named class, the Random Access Stream Reference. Resolve that in Windows Store Streams. Um, and that I'm going to create from a URI. We're going to pull that out from uh, the, uh, that image that I dragged in before. So the URI to identify that little uh, wp.png is ms-apex. Come along, whack, whack, whack. Assets, whack, wplogo.png, Windows Platform Logo.png. So that's pulled in our image. And then we're going to say, 
OK, I need to get the area of the map because I'm going to just generate some random points all over that area. So we need to use our, this extension. We need to declare the namespace for that, which is mapping utilities, so we can get that extension method. Uh, there we go, put in that namespace. And here we go. Uh, now, hopefully, that should resolve now. Get, yeah, there we are. Get view area extension method. Um, that gives the current area of the map control on the screen. And then we you can use that information to generate some random points. Uh, so we go off to our point list utility class, the data class, get some random points. And this method needs a uh, top left corner, a geo point for the top left corner, which is the, area, the top left corner of our map, area.northwest corner, and the bottom right, which is area.southwest, southeast corner. And we want, f well, let's have 50, 50 uh, points over, distributed at random points over the map. Right, now, and then for each, uh, data object in, and this time we want to get uh, from that point that we've just generated. Uh, what we're going to do? We're going to um, create ourselves a new shape. Uh, this time it's a map icon. So these are different from the other ones. These map icons, uh, there you could. This is the one where you can give it a title, a string that will be displayed onto the map. Uh, there will be, obviously it has a location, most importantly, uh, the data object of points dot first, so that will give it the lat long where we're going to put it. The normalized anchor point, so this is uh, kind of where the, uh, the lat long is on the image of the map icon, so we're actually going to center it, so 0.5 on the x, 0.5 on this one by one square. Image is that image, and the z index is, the, is 5, so that will be up on the top of everything else. Great. Now we just need to uh, add that to uh, my map dot map elements. Uh, add it in, and that will also be displayed on the map along with everything else. Uh, before we do that, let's just fill in uh, the missing bit because this one's really simple. Uh, my map, the delete all is my map dot map elements dot clear. Nice and simple. Um, and let's try and run that. Here we go, we've got our lines, we've done that, polygons, great. Here's our points, 50 of them distributed randomly across, and you can see they've got a little bit of text, we can delete them all. Great, so we're going well. Um, just need to just complete this for completeness' sake, uh, we need to zoom out and zoom in. So this is how you can programmatically zoom uh, out a map. Uh, new zoom is my map, you just reduce the zoom level by, well, uh, an amount, let's say one. But you need to just check that you don't allow them to zoom it out too far. So if that drops below, one is the lowest zoom level you can have. Um, so if it's less than one, you set it to one and then just uh, set the map zoom level. Uh, zoom in is very similar, except you're adding one. And here you need to check that we don't exceed the maps, the maps maximum zoom level. There we go. Um, if we, if we're trying to do that, then actually just you just bound it at the maximum zoom level. And now we can be able to zoom it in and out. So we can zoom it out. There we go. And and it, we're drawing it with loads of points on it. And this is revealing itself as Amersfoort. And at this point, I have to thank MVP Jost van Schaik, who actually did this demo for Windows Phone 8.1, which just illustrates that this is the same control and pretty much the same demo, but now uh, it's running right the way across uh, desktop and phone, uh, right the way across any, any of our platforms that's running the UAP. So there you go. That showed you how to, to draw stuff in different ways onto, uh, onto the map. And yeah, powerful. Uh, a lot of things you can do. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. And that's, that scratches the surface. It's a really powerful control. You can do some really, really cool stuff. Yeah. And I um, think you and I know that the team's even delivering more. Like, there's more coming. There's more coming, yeah. So this is the preview that we got at the moment. And, uh, yeah, it's going to get richer. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, pretty cool. So I just wanted to uh, sort of just finish with this kind of reminder, because this does cause confusion for a lot of people. So if you want to data pine with XAML, using the map items control, you need that if you've got a kind of relatively small number of items to draw. As soon as you start to draw, draw too many with XAML, then you get per performance getting yeah. looks, doesn't and look And it's probably good. a balance of quantity and complexity. So you could have exactly. three, but if it's a gigantic visual tree, then that could even be overwhelming. Indeed, yes. Yeah. So you've got to use that carefully. Uh, map icon, icons, icons are great. They're kind of integrated into the map, so mm. you get better perf. So if you've got a larger amount of items, uh, they it will get drawn very efficiently onto the map. 
The downside of that is that you can't use this for anything that simply absolutely must be shown because they are shown on a best effort basis. I see. So the, the map decides yeah. whether or not to show it based As they on zoom all in and out and what other stuff is There's there. a heuristic that you don't yeah. get to control. Exactly, yeah. That makes sense. And then finally, there's the tile source to display tiled images, which you can integrate in at different levels as well. So uh, All right, so I don't even have to use the control. I can go right out to the Bing's map app. I can use the control. But then we have this additional piece where we have these, these services. Yep. So yeah, so uh, in addition to this, so we, we, we've covered the drawing. Now what about finding out what to draw and this sort of thing? So there's a bunch of useful APIs that can help you to uh, uh, get uh, driving routes, as you say oh, over here. Nice. Driving routes, yeah. So you get a drive, get routes drive. for a tree. No, no, dr routes of where you go from A to B. What do you, what's a tree have? That's of roots. Oh. They're different kind Clearly. of routes. Clearly. <laughs> different routes. Let's move on. Yes. Map route finder, get driving route async, means get driving route async, means you get, you know, you get your start, you, you put in a, I'm starting from here and I'm going to here, mm. uh, and then it'll give you, uh, it'll give you, comes back with a, a list a of connections. And a walking route, isn't that nice? A walking route as well. Oh. Yeah. And a, you can actually you do uh, get multi-point driving mm. routes. So you, you may have a fleet that you're trying to work with, and you could give them routing for delivering. Things. That's right. You need to go from here to here to here to here, and it'll work out the the the, the route. That's pretty neat. It That's is good. Neat. Yeah, and, and you, give, you know get time.